Hi Chris, very good afternoon. Good afternoon to you. Um, Can you just say about the inter-draft uh, 50 event? How you did you got an experience? Yeah, the International Drought Conference 5 or uh, inter-draft 5 was a very uh, interesting and important meeting, especially bringing people working on various crops and in various stages of the crop value chains and working in diff different systems. Particularly important here is to get the knowledge that works from the upstream level of the science of discovery through the downstream level of science of delivery to ensure that uh, you know climate smart practices are developed that meet the changes that are affecting uh, the, the, the production, particularly small older farmers, which uh, in this particular case looking at the drought as one of the very serious factors that are affect the yield, that affect the resilience, that affect the productivity, and of course that affect the food production and the nutrition of these smallholder farmers. Yeah, that's good. Did you attend the last event in the Australia? No, I did not. Yeah, yeah, that's it's, good. it's my first time to attend the Interground meeting. Can you just give any knowledge about the turmeric? Turmeric. About? Turmeric. Turmeric? Yes, yes. In mm -hmm. Um, I, I, am not, I don't think I know the crop so much. Yeah, okay, yeah, okay. Yeah. Well, because in our uh, North uh, Telangana we had uh, lots of uh, turmeric crop. Oh yeah, we, we, we love turmeric but we don't Do produce turmeric. Do you have any knowledge or anything about the turmeric? Yes, yes. <laughs> well, uh, for us we know that it's a, a crop, a plant which has a lot of um, uh, antibiotic factors, health benefits and all of us are always looking for it for purposes of nutritional and, uh, and health benefits. Mm -hmm. But in terms of actual production, not many of us are doing the production back where I come from. Mm, can you give any suggestions or anything for your Telangana agriculture? Yes, Telangana agriculture is uh, quite similar in many in many sense with uh, several parts of the, the semi-arid tropics where we come from where a drought is a serious issue which keeps occurring from time to time. Importantly to mention here is that uh, when you look at the total amount of rainfall per year, Many places in Telangana, just like in the rest of the semi arid tropics, have almost the same amount of total rainfall. But the distribution of this rainfall is so um, erratic and uh, quite variable to an extent that the farmers find it difficult to really know when to plant, when to weed, when to harvest. So uh, they end up having very low yields. So uh, it is very important for uh, two things for number one, to harvest the water that the Telangana state receives whenever they receive it and number two to use that water for irrigation but at the same time to think in terms of uh, using drought resistant crops drought tolerant crops drought tolerant varieties of those crops but also where possible to use crops that can escape droughts because of their short duration early maturing varieties okay. yeah okay thank you so much for your valuable time thank you very much thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. I am research program director at International Crops Research Institute for the same year tropic. I have been working here at ICRISAT for last 12 years. I am having the research experience for last 15 years in international agriculture. I have been engaged in genome sequencing and molecular breeding of several legume crops. We are very excited to have this Inter Drought 5 conference. I should tell you that this conference is in the series of earlier Inter Drought conference. The first conference was held in France, second was in Italy, third one was in China, fourth was one in Australia, and fifth one is here in India. I should mention that this Inter Drought 5 is the largest conference with about 942 participants from 315 countries, sorry, from 315 organizations from the 56 countries. So in this particular conference, we are trying to address the issues of the farming community. What happens that this international agriculture is done by smallholder farmers in developing countries? Because majority of time this agriculture is dependent on the rainfall. And if you don't have the rainfall, then farmers are not able to produce enough amount of that crop. So they are always in the loss. 
So through this international conference, by bringing the experts from all over the world, we are working on the aspect that what approaches we should use, what kind of new approaches like genomics, molecular breeding, physiology, bioinformatics, modeling, system biology, that we should use these approaches so that we can enhance the crop productivity, we can produce the high quality seeds and then these seeds can reach to the farmers. In the end, we would like to see that farmers can harvest more produce, they can generate more income and then only as in India, Honorable Prime Minister Mr. Modi says that we need to double the income of the farmers. So in this direction we would like to contribute so that we can have more produce, more income and more prosperity to farmers. Thank you. So good afternoon. It's a pleasure to be here. My name is Rob Bertram. I'm the chief scientist in the Bureau for Food Security in the U.S. Agency for International Development. The Bureau for Food Security is the part of USAID that focuses on ensuring that people have access uh, to an adequate food uh, no, I'm not doing this for a while. That, can you, from, I'm the chief scientist in the Bureau for Food Security in the U.S. Agency for International Development. Uh, we're the part of USAID that works with partners around the world, including here in India, to help ensure that the world can feed itself and that the, that the issues of hunger and undernutrition are ended and we measure our work by, by the degree to which extreme poverty is reduced and also by which child stunting is reduced so that people are getting a, a good nutritious diet. So I'm here this week in Hyderabad to participate in the Interdrought 5 workshop. This is a uh, meeting that's held every four years of uh, global scientists from around the world. And uh, this year, USAID is co-collaborating with the Indian Council on Agricultural Research to support this important meeting. And the reason that we're interested in drought is that, as you know, drought is a, a fact of life. I mean, in India, some years the monsoon is good, some years it isn't. It's the same all over the world. And many of the areas in which we work, in which we're still trying to address a risk in agriculture, so as, as a means to reduce hunger and reduce extreme poverty, drought is one of the very top risks that we worry about. So we're, what we're doing here is bringing together scientists from around the world to tr exchange their ideas and views on the most effective ways to combat drought. There are many approaches to addressing drought, all the way from information about the weather and when to plant, for example, to all the way through to irrigation and, and the possibility of having irrigated fields. But one of the things that's so important now and so exciting is the role of new science that's helping scientists breed new crops that have greater resilience to drought, to high temperatures, uh, and to pests and diseases. So all of these approaches are important to reducing risk and helping to ensure Indian farmers and farmers around the world that when they plant their seeds they both have the potential to make a good yield in a good year but also to minimize the risks, the downside, the loss of yield in a drought year. An especially important partner for us in the work in India with the Indian universities and Indian Council of Agricultural Research is also ICRASAT, the International Center for the Crops Research Institute, in, I'm sorry, the International Crops Research Institute for the Semi-Arid Tropics. It's, it's headquartered right here outside of Hyderabad and they work on the important crops, sorghum, millet, pigeon pea, groundnut, chickpea, the very important crops uh, that people in drought prone areas of the tropics depend upon for food security. So together with ICAR, ICRASAT, and ICRASAT, USAID is sponsoring this meeting and uh, we work 
with ICRASAT as a means of not only helping scientists in India, uh, helping scientists and ultimately farmers in India t to work together uh, with the global community, but also to bring the benefits of Indian science, for example, to Africa, where there's a lot of areas that grow these same crops, and vice versa. There's some, by, by collaborating, sometimes you can get ahead of a disease before it comes to, here, to a place, or ahead of a pest. So this is a very important part of the international cooperation, and it's very important to have India as a partner in this work. And it's important not only because of the universities and ICAR, but also because of the Indian private sector. The Indian seed companies, the Indian life science companies that are investing in agricultural technologies and really on the cutting edge of science. We look to India as an important strategic partner in our efforts to reduce and eventually eradicate hunger and extreme poverty across the world. And, and remember that some of the worst poverty is located in agricultural regions. So agriculture is a very important means of helping bring billions of people literally up from poverty, but also to ensure that food is available and affordable, nutritious food is available and affordable to them. So we're very glad for this partnership and it's been a wonderful week. We've had so many ideas exchanged and uh, I'm excited to continue this work in the future. Thank you. Can you just give me the feedback about this uh, Interdrought 50 event? Oh yeah, the Interdrought event, the conference. Uh, this is actually my first time at the Interdrought event and uh, I've loved it so far. Firstly, I appreciate the, the, the multicultural and multidisciplinary representation of the, the talks in the event. So it brings drought from different perspectives, the physiology, the genetics, but also the, the agronomic views. So I like that a lot. And also the, the fact that it creates an avenue where people from different countries who are also affected by drought can interact and share ideas. It's a good one. And that thing I like about the, the, the conference is the, the provision of transportation for the delegates who are staying far away from the venue of the conference. That is good. And also for me, it's, it's good to have a taste of Indian food in the conference. So I, li I like those a lot. Thank you. Can you just say me about the innovative things about the pot uh, potato cultivation? The innovative things? Yes, innovative things. Yeah, in, in potato, uh, we, we do a lot because potato, cultivated potato is tetraploid, mm -hmm. which makes the genetics of it difficult. So at the moment, we utilize a lot of genome-wide uh, association mapping to find QTLs that will be interesting for, for instance, drought tolerance in potato. And we also try to use um, RNA sequencing to find the transcripts that are of high importance in drought response. With this, we hope that um, it will be easier to breed for drought tolerant potatoes in the near future. But of course, with the advent of CRISPR-Cas technology, for instance, we can easily edit genes by targeted uh, editing to be able to modify, well, not modify, to be able to change the genes that we want to have um, contribute positively to, to the germ plasm. Yeah. So these are the trends I would say in potato are important for the coming future. Yeah. Is the Indian uh, Indian agriculture land suit for the potatoes cultivation? Uh, well, I've been here for only four days, but with my interaction uh, with few Indians. Research knowledge, as per your research knowledge. Yeah, but I have not researched in India. But from what I hear here, India is a, is a staple food crop eaten by people yeah, and uh, I think India grows potatoes, maybe not the kind of potatoes I'm used to, but definitely it has to be tetraploid potato. So I think India, if India eats potatoes, then this the soil in India should be good for potato. But you know, potato is a crop that doesn't like a lot of drought. Huh? So that's also why my research is important, because when we, we are able to breed drought tolerant potatoes, they can grow in any arid or semi-arid part of the world like India. So India is a potential land for more improved potato varieties, I think. Okay, thank you so much for giving an interview for the Telangana Kabarlu. Yeah. All the best, Telangana crew.